Over the past several years, a SCAR RP2000.1D has been a very popular seller, probably for the price point as well as the performance of this amplifier. You really get a lot for your money. Now, this amplifier is not easy to find right now. It's kind of out of stock everywhere. And this is something that happened also back in 2020. So Down for Sound decided to come up with their own amp, the JP23, to kind of give people something while the SCAR was out of stock. And uh, yeah, it turned into a whole line of amplifiers. So let's let JP tell us about the JP23. For instance, when we came out with our very first uh, amplifier, the JP23, it was because um, SCAR Audio couldn't, they, they ran out of stock. It was like we went through the whole COVID thing or whatever, and they couldn't supply us with the RP2000. Like we need to come up with our own 2000 so we can like hit that, that fill that void. So fill the void, it did. The JP23 was really a start of a whole line of amplifiers from Down for Sound. With the old school looks, kind of looks like an old school US amps. You can tell the version one here denoted on this version lets you know that they were planning on upgrading this over the years. And here's the gut shot of the amp. As with all generation one amps, there were some bugs with this one. The stickers on top of the caps were kind of loose. You know, the remote base indicator was bright enough where you needed to wear sunglasses to keep it from blinding you. But you know, it's a generation one. You live and you learn and you make things better. The JP23 really shook up the market because a lot of people thought it was kind of a joke that Down for Sound was coming out with an amp. But they quickly proved that, you know, this is no joke. These amps are serious, come with a really cool bass knob. Version 1.5, they put a plexi panel on the bottom to further show off the internals and made the amp look even cooler. So what do we have here today? We have a version two of the JP23. Let's talk about it. Right off the bat, you can see the power ratings here on the box, 2,800 watts at one ohm, 1,800 at two ohms, as well as some of the other options there. And here's the amp pulled out of the box along with the accessories. See what we have in the box. We have a couple of Allen's keys as well as some standoffs there for the amplifier for mounting it to keep it from vibrating. We have the JP23 version two manual. These manuals are very good. Talk about how to link the amps, how to adjust the crossovers, that type stuff. Also, we have a Cat5 base cable. And here is the base remote. Looks like a little mini version of the amplifier. Very cool. It is aluminum, so nice and solid. It does have the voltage, the Celsius and Fahrenheit temperature of the amp, the power protect and clip. All the stuff you need include the volume knob. And here is the amp, the Down for Sound JP23 V2. It's the same blue anodized color as the JP8 and the JP84. I will show the 84 next to it later in the video. Here on one end of the amp, we have the Tiffany style RCA inputs, power protect and clip LEDs, gain control from 0.2 up to six volts, subsonic 10 Hertz to 50 Hertz, bass boost zero to nine dB at 45 Hertz. Also the socket there for the remote base cable, low pass frequency from 250 down to 35 Hertz, the output master input slave connection, as well as the RCA jumper there to go to the other amp. Overall, virtually the same here as the previous version. On the opposite side, we have the 1.0 inputs for power and ground. We have the remote terminal connection there and also dual speaker outputs. This is a mono block amplifier. So the, ampl the uh, positives are wired parallel internally and the negatives are wired parallel internally. So you don't need to use all these connections. It just does give you additional opportunity to connect up more speakers or dual voice coil speakers. As a comparison to the other previous JP23, you can see quite a difference in the length here. Actually over four inches difference in length. 13.4 inches on the new one, 17.7 .7 on the old one, as well as the other same dimension, 7.4 inches for the width, 2.2 for the height. You can see millimeter equivalents there as well. As far as the ratings go, 4 ohms is rated 800 watts, 2 ohms 1800, 1 ohm 2800. Those are all at 14.4 volts RMS power. Currently, this amp is priced 379. Don't shoot me in the future if the price changes. Now, since I've had a lot of new people join my channel here, I want to talk about the dyno. Yes, you've heard of a dyno for a car where you can find out how much horsepower it puts out. And in this example here, we have some ricers and you can see when they run these tests on these big machines, you can see how much horsepower, 
how much torque, things like that. Well, we also have something in the audio community called an amplifier dyno. And we can put an amplifier here to find out how much power it puts out. Very cool, huh? So what you're going to see here on the display is the RMS power output in watts. You'll see the ohm load, also the voltage of the dyno. Also show a clamp meter, which helps us calculate efficiency. In each test, the amp dyno has three different modes, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. And really, it just tells the difference between the distortion. Certified is up to 1% distortion. Uncertified is up to the clipping point. Dynamic shows how much dynamic power the amp has. Before testing the amp on the dyno, we do have to configure it to match up with the dyno. We gain match to the head unit with a 9 dB overlap for the test. Set the subsonic to minimum, low pass filter to the maximum setting. In addition, we make sure the master slave set to master. Now when possible, I use dual inputs with a 1.0 input amplifier. So in this case, we did use the dual inputs, also use eight gauge for the speaker out. So let's power up the amplifier and get ready here for the first test at four ohms. It's rated 800 watts at 14.4 volts. The certified test is first as usual. Let's fire it up and see if we get that 800 watts. And yes, quite easily, 1,403 watts at 14.36 volts. This is a good sign moving forward for uh, how much power this amplifier has. Uncertified up to clipping. We expect more than 1,400. And yeah, look at that, a little over 1,500 at 14.34. Now what about dynamic? Let's send a 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp, kind of like a kick drum or dynamics in music. This gives you an idea of how it handles the dynamics. You can see here 1481 at 14.3. Now what about efficiency? We measured 87% at four ohms. Now let's go back and do a comparison of the SCAR, the JP23 version one, and also this version two. And you can see here, Difference in power, quite impressive. Next up, two ohms mono rated 1800 watts at 14.4 volts. Certified test first. I expect we'll get this 1800 watts, no problem. And yes, 2247 watts at 14.12. So we're still like three tenths of a volt away from 14.4 and still got well over the rated power. Uncertified test up to clipping. Again, our voltage has dropped to right at 14 volts, 2556 at 14 volts. So this amp pretty much does its rated power at two ohms. Dynamic, send the pulse tone again, 2617 watts at 14.16. Efficiency drops off a little bit, still not too bad. 76% at two ohms, 40 hertz certified. Once again, we'll show a comparison of the results of the SCAR, the JP23 version one and the 23 version two. And you can see quite a bit of difference in power, but literally almost a thousand watts difference. So quite a bit. One ohm mono is rated 2800 watts. Now the JP23 version one was rated 2300. Let's see what we get here. Try to keep it close to 14.4 and we got it right at it. 3334 at 14.4. Yeah, we smiling, because that's good power. That's at 500 watts over the rated power. Again, if you guys aren't happy that this does overrate it, you can always tune it back a little bit. You know, having the extra juice is never a bad thing. 35.73 at 13.7 for the uncertified test. And then dynamic test. Oh boy, we're, we're oh, knock, knock, knocking on 4,000, and we beat it, 43.73, 14.26. What about efficiency? Dropped off a little bit, still 73% at one ohm. Once again, let's compare all three amplifiers and their ratings, their measurements at one ohm. And yeah, the results pretty much speak for themselves. Speaking of results, let's take a one screenshot here of everything to show the different power at four, two, and one ohm. Very impressed with the performance of this amp. Now, Let's hook it up to the quad box and find out, shall it have bumpeth? And yes, this remote base knob is very cool. They did uh, knock down the brightness by about 25%, so it doesn't blind you anymore. That's really cool. Still works the same. Has a good volume knob and everything. So uh, yeah, let's check it out here. We can see the temperature, 
22 degrees Celsius, 73 degrees Fahrenheit of the amp, so nice and cool. Let's find out if it bumps. I know it's hard to tell differences with amplifiers in this segment if you're using a cell phone or something, but overall the amp did very well, handled the subs, produced nice clean bass, so it had no issues with it at all. Now let's find out what's inside. Check out the amplifier here. We'll take off the bottom panel, which includes the six Phillips screws. And then we have to disconnect the, um, the fan here, and then we can check out the guts. You can see transformers, you see capacitors, you can see the chokes. The caps for the rails are 160 volt, 1800 microfarad, 105 degrees Celsius. For the input filtering, 3300 microfarad, 25 volts. Again, 105 degrees Celsius. And here is a visual comparison of the version 1.0 slash 1.5 and the 2.0 at the bottom. You can see we have two transformers now versus four before but they are bigger now and they have more windings on them. So just more efficient layout here. Now the old version had do not eat on it. The new one, it looks like everything is packed so tight they didn't have a place to put a fancy saying in here. Oh well. Let's talk about the pros and cons. Things that I like and things I think could be better or at least things to be aware of. It did rated power plus in all modes. It is linkable, has active cooling with the fan, Tiffany style RCAs. The efficiency is good. Excellent base remote. We love the base remote with the power protect LEDs as well as the temperature of the amp. Keep status on everything. Plexi bottom, of course, for showing it off. Compact footprint is not near as big as the other amp. And it matches the JP8 and JP84 if you want to use multiples in a system. Things to consider, the fan is kind of loud at idle. There is no phase control. There was no phase control in the other version. The remote base cable is stiff. It makes it hard for running it in your car. I'm sure they can fix that by getting a different version. It's very important to remind you, it takes power to make power. This amp, although small, still pulls over 300 amps of current, so make sure you have the electrical required. I'll leave links in the video description for upgraded wiring kits as well as extra batteries that can help you with that. Now the bump in power also includes a bump in price. It's not a tremendous bump, but it is there just to note. Amp performed extremely well overall. And just as a disclosure, this amp was sent to me by Down for Sound for testing. But just understand, I do these tests for you guys. I don't do them for Down for Sound. So I let you know what I think about the amp. And they're always interested to know what I think about it and how it performed. And overall, this amp performed well. I think it's a viable upgrade. Thank you guys always for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. I'm sure you guys are interested in what about the 0.8 and lower test. Well, I'm going to put these over on the Wilson Audio Extras channel. So make sure you check the link in the video description so you can see the additional test on this amp. You know how them sound waves go? Mm-hmm.